A fun thing to add to most action-oriented games is the ability for your player to dash around the level. There's a lot of cool game mechanics you can design around a player dash, but it gives the player something to do while they're moving around, and really, it's just kind of fun to go fast. So I have this scene here, and this is entirely from my five minute top-down shooter tutorial. I have a 2D player that I can move around with my WASD and arrow keys. The player faces the direction of my mouse, and we're not gonna do any shooting mechanics, though it is in here from that tutorial. Check that out if you wanna follow up to this point, but you don't really need this. The important things are I have my player object, I have a Rigibody 2D, and here are the settings on it. So I'm not gonna cover everything in my player controller at this point. It may look like a lot, but it's really not. The key things to note, we have a move speed, we have a Rigibody 2D, we have a move direction and a mouse position. In update, we're just handling checks for inputs. In fixed update, we're then actually applying our move to our Rigibody velocity and our Rigibody rotation, which is based on where the mouse is. So again, if you want this exact controller, do my five minute top-down shooter tutorial, you'll get here. Otherwise, you can just adapt dashing into your game. And so let's actually start with the variables we're going to need to handle our dash. And the first thing I wanna do is actually create a header. And we'll call this dash settings. And this is just for organizational purposes. Now, just like move speed, the first thing we wanna do is actually determine a dash speed. So we can say serialize field float dash speed. And I'll default this to something like 10 and we could play around with it in the inspector later. We need another serialize field for a float and we need a dash duration. And again, I'll default this to like one second. And final float we're gonna need is a dash cooldown. And I'll do that for one second as well. So with these three variables in place, we'll now be able to customize these as we see fit. But let's go ahead and make a new private method in our player controller called dash. So in our movement script, we're using our inputs to get the axis of horizontal and vertical, which is our WASD and arrow key inputs. And then we basically calculate that down here into a move direction. And that's how we know where we're headed. And so we can actually use this move direction down here in our dash. That's gonna determine the direction we're dashing. And then it's very simple. We can just set our rigid body velocity equal to a new vector two. And then we wanna do move direction dot X multiplied by our dash speed as well as our move direction dot y multiplied by our dash speed. And so if you look here on line 41, it's actually the same exact call as our move speed. We're just now substituting it with our dash speed. Now the dash is actually going to last a certain amount of time, at least in my case. And that's what our dash duration is for. But in order to do that, we actually don't wanna have this be a private void function. We want to make this an I enumerator so that we can use this like a coroutine. And then after we set our speed to be much faster, we basically wanna tell it to wait. So we can say yield, return new, wait for seconds, and pass in our dash duration float. And so these two lines basically handle the bulk of our logic of what we want to do. The only thing that's not explicitly clear is whether or not we're currently dashing and if we can dash again. And the easiest way for us to handle these types of things, which is the same also for jumping and other cases during movement, is to add a Boolean check. So up here at the top, I'll go ahead and add a bool and call it is dashing. And without a value, this will default to false. So with that bool made, the first thing we actually wanna do when we call dash is to set is dashing to true. And then after we wait for our dash duration, well then we can set is dashing equal to false. Then I can go ahead and in our update function, which is a good place to check for inputs, I can say if input.getKeyDown, and I'll check for key code of space, but you can customize this to whatever you want it to be. And then I'm just going to say start coroutine, and we'll pass in dash, just like this. So when we hit the space bar, we'll go ahead and dash. Now the last thing I wanna do, because I have update and fixed update, I actually don't want anything else to happen while we're dashing. So I'll simply do a check up here and say if, is dashing, well then we'll just return. And while we could wrap this in a method, I'll just go ahead and copy and paste it into fixed update. And essentially what this means is every time we're dashing, none of the code below it will get called, which means we won't be able to move while we're dashing and we won't be able to like rotate our player around with our mouse. But with everything in place, we can go ahead and test now. So I'll launch the game. I'm moving, I'm gonna press space and we'll see my player's dashing. And while he's dashing, I'm not aiming. It's a little long right now, so we can tweak some of the values, but it's definitely working at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank the dash speed up to like say 20, I think 10 was too slow. And a dash duration of one second is a little too long. I'm gonna go ahead and make this like 0.25, so a quarter of a second. This is something you're gonna have to play around with. So with the new values in place, I can now walk and hit space. 
And yeah, that looks much more like a dash. It's more just like a burst of speed. So the problem is I can actually spam spacebar here. And if you didn't want to have a cooldown in between dashes, this is working just fine. Well, let's say you did. Let's say you didn't want someone to be able to spam dash and you wanted them to wait maybe a second or more. Well, that's why we made this float for a dash cooldown. We want to add one more bool here and we'll call this Ken dash. And down here where we checked for if we're pressing the space bar, we want to also add a condition to say, can we dash? And in the case that we can, and this is true, well, that's when we're going to call it. So the question then becomes, when do we prevent people from dashing? And the first place that comes to mind is when we actually start dashing, right? You shouldn't be able to dash while you're already doing it. So we'll set can dash equal to false. And then after our dash is completed and we've waited for our dash duration, we basically want to wait again. And so after this, we can say yield return new wait for seconds, just like the dash duration. But in here, we want to pass in the dash cooldown. And after the cooldown has been waited for, then we want to set can dash equal to true. One more thing I'm going to do is come to the top and I'll add our start function in. And I'll just set can dash equal to true in here. You can also initialize the Boolean to be equal to true but I'll just be explicit and set it to true every time we start the game. And so at the beginning of the game, we're gonna be able to dash, which means we're gonna be able to hit spacebar and initiate our dash. Once the dash starts, we're gonna say we can no longer dash because we are dashing. We're gonna set our velocity to a increased speed for a set amount of time, and we'll wait for that amount of time or the duration to elapse. Afterwards, we'll say we are no longer currently dashing. We will then wait for a certain amount of time for our cooldown before we're able to dash again. Hopefully this makes sense to you. And now launching the game, we can test it out for real. So I'm pressing spacebar, I'm spamming it as fast as I can. And you'll see there's a full second in between each time I'm able to dash. And that's because our dash cooldown is currently set to one. You could play with this value. So I could set it to maybe like five. And then you'll notice I'm unable to dash again for an entire five seconds. And that's it. This is an easy way to add dash to your game. Hopefully this helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions down below and I'll try and answer them. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next one.